Hello and welcome back to the channel and our long-term playthrough here in OOTP 25 with our expansion team, the Mobile Bay Bears. And it is time for Major League Baseball in 2029. It is opening day and we are excited. This is our third full season in Major League Baseball and we are very intrigued at the team and we think that it is going to be a much improved team hopefully it's a much improved team if it's not I will question my GM skills um, I still don't think we're going to be competing for a playoff spot but I do expect us to be much improved from last year as I feel like last year should be our worst year in the franchise from here on out. Uh, we only won 60 games last year coming off of a 77 win season in the first season. Um, wasn't the greatest showing last year um, especially coming off that 77 and 85 first season where we thought that we did extremely good considering uh, last year we took a step back but at the same time not surprising at all um, lost 17 more games last season but we think this year we could potentially be fighting for a similar record to our first year, at least I hope. Um, let's take a look at what the preseason predictions say we're gonna do. And they say we are improved as well, um, but not as much as I'm hoping for. But they are saying that we are improved by 10 wins. They're gonna give us a 70 and 92 projection or prediction. And um, yeah, I don't disagree, but at the same time, I don't agree. I think we're a little better than that, but I could be completely wrong. I thought we were going to do better than we did last year, um, but at the same time, I wasn't surprised, like I said. The projecting that we score 682 runs, um, 163 home runs, and then we allow 758 runs. They are predicting that we have a 4.43 ERA as a um, combined ERA for the squad, which is much better than last year. Um, let me go ahead and check. Yeah, we had a 5.22 ERA last year. Uh, only scored 652 runs. And they have us at like 680 something this year and 740 um, or 750 runs allowed. So definitely they have us making a solid improvement. And I think that is accurate. Um, but nonetheless, I guess the only thing left to do, we've, we've met the 2029 Mobile Bay Bears in the last episode. We went over the scouts or the the scouts the prospects in our organization again we are seventh overall now and we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen top 200 prospects and seven top 100 prospects so definitely moving along in our player development um, just before we get the season, I will do, uh, I will check in on our budget. So we have $11 million available. I'm gonna leave myself with a little bit of wiggle room just in case. I do expect that money to go down a little bit as our um, salaries for our minor league contracts that have major league options have not kicked in yet. So that will go down um, a few million. I think we'll probably be sitting between the five and seven million um, range. 
so not great. And then we have roughly $19 million for extensions. We'll see what we can get done. I have some players in mind to get extensions done. I will explore those in my own time. And uh, if anything comes of that, I will let you guys know. Um, but nonetheless, um, I am going to try to sign some people long term when I can. Um, our market size is below average. Our fan loyalty is below average. That hasn't moved. Our fan interest is at 51 now. That has kind of gone back and forth. Um, not really sure what it's going to take to get that fan interest up. Obviously, winning is going to help, but it's been noted um, by several YouTubers. Most notably that I watch is Old School Sports. He is not happy with the way the fan interest metric moves back and forth. And um, I haven't experienced it too much on my end, although I haven't signed those top tier prospects that really move that fan interest left or right. So I'm sure that is coming in the future. And hopefully there's a future patch that helps us not see so far left and right extreme movements when players are signed because that does really control a lot especially when it comes to your budget um, but yeah that is where we stand to start this season let's go ahead and play our first game and see how our 2029 season is going to kick off and we are 1-0 to start this season came out hot with the bats several home runs most notably nico horner who was our leadoff hitter this game went four for five with four rbis one of those uh, rbis came on a home run um, three runs scored and just an outstanding start to the season Hor our junior moreno started well as as well um, two for four uh, with a double. So the guy that doesn't have any gap power got a double. Um, also, most notably, our rookie sensation so far, Mason Davis, hit his first major league home run in his first at bat in the major leagues. Went two for five, two ribbies, and absolutely his first major league hit was a home run an awesome start to his career um, as I mentioned Horner hit a home run our shortstop Jose Fernandez also hit a home run and looks like Gilbert and Mason both had two out RBIs Gilbert went four for five just an absolutely awesome start to the season Nico Horner also stole a base. Um, Chris Montgomery went six innings of three-run uh, ball, so he had a quality start for us, 85 pitches. And then Greg Ricks went three innings to collect the save. So he used two pitchers there and won 15-8, to eight, or excuse me, 9-3. to three. Um and an absolute dominant first game of the season. So hopefully that is a sign of things to come and we have a much better season this year. But we shall see. Let's get this thing rolling. And we are three games into the season and unfortunately we have lost a outfielder for about a month. Lawrence Butler fractured a rib and he will be out for four weeks. Um, unfortunate for sure um, so we have put him on the IL also to note Dustin May is pending a upper body injury we do not know the extent of that we hope it is not bad he threw a third of an inning and was injured so hopefully it is not bad but we do have to make a call up for 
Lawrence Butler's um, injury, and I am going to go with a familiar name, Jay Allen. Defensive guy, not really much with the bat, but we are going to have a defensive player um, call up that way. Um, he can be our backup, as I believe Brandon Marsh, yes, is going to fill in in left field um, for Butler, or excuse me, right field for Butler, and um, he will be our starter and Logan Al or Jay Allen will be our depth guy. So let me go ahead and fix the lineup here, and hopefully we get good news on Dustin May, and it's just a short injury. And we did find out about Dustin May. He is going to be out with a bleak strain, um, only five days. Um, however, I am very tempted to just be cautious with him and to give him some time to recover um, with that oblique. I don't want this lingering. So I think I am going to go ahead and place him on the IL. Um, just a 15 day IL just to give him some recovery time and then bring him back afterwards. Um, we will get Jose Cornell back in roughly two days. Um, I was going to give him a rehab start. He did five games in spring training hmm last pitched on May 22nd I will probably just bring him straight back to the team so I'll wait the two days bring him back to the team and then I'll let um, Dustin May heal for the 15 days, and then we will look at who we will DFA or option down to AAA when Dustin May comes back. Well, we are 11 games into the season, and I don't really know what else to say. We have lost 10 straight. 10 straight games and we are getting smacked by the injury bug um, won the first game of the season and now we're just getting just destroyed um, Brandon Marsh is day to day does have a sore elbow affects his throwing but that's about it we're leaving him in Chris Montgomery is out for one week with a dead arm. I am very tempted to also put him on the IL. But I don't know if I want to do that again or do that to another player. Um, our pitching has been absolutely just terrible. One, two, three, four people in the over 10 ERA, almost five, half our pitching staff in the bullpen. Our starting pitching is not great, but it is better than our bullpen, that is for sure. Um, I'm probably just going to move Chris Montgomery out, and I'm going to put Johan Aviedo back in. I'm also tempted to do Greg Ricks. He seems to be our best relief pitcher. He has given up no runs, or do I leave him where he is at? That is the question. Probably leave him where he's at. I'll put Johan in there. We'll let Chris sit out for a week and bring him back. Um, one in ten, not the start we wanted, guys, at all. And... Kind of upsetting, but 
is what it is. Um, hopefully this team can wake up and get going. Our pitching is just killing us, and I don't, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, so we will continue on and see if guys can turn it around a little bit. And we have made it through the month of April and not the greatest month to start the season. We did claw back a little bit towards the end and play respectable ball after our, um, what was it, 10-game losing streak? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We won the first game, lost the next 10, um, and then we started winning from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You know, we played roughly 500 ball. So hopefully that first stretch is out of the way and we can get this thing rolling. We are at 9 and 18 through April. We are playing better. And we did get um, some help back. We got Lawrence Butler back off the IL. I am going to go ahead and just put him right back in the lineup. Um, I know he missed a month, but at the same time, we need him because Brandon Marsh continues to stay banged up. Um, moderate effect on his throwing, and that's it. There's no timetable for this sore elbow to go away. Drew Gilbert, of note, was also banged up. He is better now. Um, he had a uh, I believe it was back spasms. Um, and then also Dustin May was banged up. Uh, it looks like he is better now. Uh, he had some back spasms issues. Uh, not pitching particularly well for us either at, at 8-10 ERA. Uh, Josh Spores at a 12-7-9 ERA really starting to aggravate me um, a little bit. Um, we do have a few other pitchers in the nines. I'm just not doing well with the bullpen. Could be a couple of reasons. Um, maybe there's too many guys that think they should be starters and they're not happy. Um, even though he's unhappy about the team record, I think Oviedo was the only one. Nope, he's just unhappy about the team record. So... We'll see. I don't know what this guy's deal is. Hasn't really lived up to what his profile was. Um, could potentially be on the outs with me. I might start shopping him. Um, 35 years old. Will be a free agent at the end of the year. This is definitely his swan song with us. And it may not be a very long swan song if uh, he doesn't turn that around but nonetheless we are in may and let's see if we can play some better ball and the injury bug has bit us again jose fernandez our starting um lost my train of thought our starting shortstop has Got injured, strained abdominal, abdominal muscle. He will be out for six weeks. Not ideal for sure. Um, we'll go ahead and put him on the IL. Um, this will trigger us to have to call up our infielder. That's depth. Um, I can't remember which one I wanted to go with. It's probably him just because he can play better. I did have Arroyo up at the beginning of the season, if you guys remember. Um, I'm going to go with him. Although, hold on. Give me one second, guys. I probably should have done my homework before. Uh, shortstop. Let me do a little bit of digging and see who, what moves I want to make before 
Um, I stay on here too long and go through this with you guys. So I will get back to you here in just a second. Okay, so I have taken Nico Horner and moved him to the shortstop position. He plays the better shortstop at 55 overall. Um, Ezekiel Duran will slide in at second baseman. He plays second base at 60 and shortstop at 50, so I just naturally went with him at second base. Um, and then I called up Michael Arroyo. We had him up earlier in the year. Um, he did well for us in 10 at bats. He had five hits, so uh, hopefully he can get back on track there and uh, and do what he was doing before we had to send him down to make room. Um, one other note uh, I am looking at, and that is my injured list. Um, Kyle Bernovich, who pitched very shortly with us in 2028 with eight games and 10 innings. He had 2.53 ERA, and then he got hurt. Um, we have him down in the minor leagues right now in a, le a rehab assignment, and he's pitching well. He's starting down there. Um, I am very tempted to pull him up and shop our dreadful 35-year-old Josh Spores. I have moved him to a middle reliever and not a setup guy anymore. So I'm definitely going to shop him and let you guys know what I find. And if I find anything worth it, then I might just go ahead and pull the trigger on that. I don't really have much patience, especially for a guy that has yet to pitch below a 5 ERA in the Mobile Bay Bears franchise. And we have found a very interesting trade. Um, I did shop Josh Spores, and unfortunately, if I did not retain any of his contract, there was no chance. No one was wanting him. When I got to 50%, uh, there was a player worth that was getting paid like 11 million and would have cost us like six million dollars on top of Spore's contract. Um, and then I increased it to retaining 80% of his contract, which isn't bad. Uh, it's 2.4 million dollars. And it opened up a different, a bunch of different possibilities. Um, one being third baseman Mitch Jeb, who is making the major league minimum. Um, a very interesting bat and a versatile infielder um, that can play slightly above average defense. Um, definitely better or has potential to be better on the first base side, which of note isn't a great strength of ours um, but above average contact decent babbit and i um, doesn't have the greatest power and gap power but is not going to strike out much so the the not striking out with the decent eye hopefully that translates into some walks unfortunately so far this year it is not um, but he is not even playing in the major leagues. He played a little bit in the my, or the major leagues last year. Sorry, I thought this said 2029. He is in AAA right now um, and has an option year left. So my thoughts is we stash him in AAA and uh, injuries happen. So if it happens, he might be the next middle infielder up or first baseman up and he could potentially provide some meaningful um, playing time for us. And he is only 26 year old, years old. He is a left-handed hitter. Um, so lots of different options with this guy. And I, guys, and I think this is a no-brainer. Um, I really don't see the downside in this. Get rid of a guy that's killing us right now in the bullpen and get a guy that's nine years younger that is potentially a above average hitter for us and a above average defender 
that can play in multiple positions. So that's my thought process. Um, and good news is the Cleveland Guardians are willing to retain his entire contract since we are retaining 80% of Spore's contract. And ultimately, it will give us an extra $500,000 in the bank. So we make money doing this, and we add depth in our middle infield and first base. So I think it's a win-win. I am going to go ahead and make this trade. And, and I was wondering why the Cleveland Guardians did this. And as you can see over here on the right side, they're trying to dump some salary. Um, and at the end of the day, I probably would have dumped someone else that's not making the major league minimum, but they're over budget right now. So they're in a freaking world of hurt. They got to dump some salary, dump some contracts, and... I guess this is one of the moves that they're willing to make. So without further ado, let's just finish this. And sorry guys, I usually do this on my own. I should have stopped the stopped it, but oh, sorry. All right, and with that, I am going to go ahead and call up Kyle Bernovich back to the major leagues. And hopefully he can provide some better innings for us. But we shall see. And we have made it to May 21st, We're playing better as of late. We are now 20 and 25, so definitely starting to feels like turn some things around here um, most notably we also just was awarded player of the week our rookie sensation thus far mason davis hit 476 this week 10 for 21 with three home runs and nine rbis on the year he is hitting 277 10 home runs 24 rbis 25 runs does have the 52 strikeouts um, in 159 at bats, so kind of what we expected there. Um, but he has a 116 WRC plus and a 1.5 WAR. Currently fielding um, in left or in center field, he has a 4.1 zone rating and a 1.078 efficiency. Does have the one error, but um, other than that, is playing very well um, cannot imagine he is not at least a front runner currently for rookie of the year um, but hopefully he continues this pace and can have a good season for us i do want to make note of another player that is having a solid season considering um, and that is junior marino he does have only the 247 batting average, but he has a 355 on base percentage. Um, 11 home runs, 27 RBIs, has 25 walks to 29 strikeouts, and has four stolen bases. Um, about what we expected, right? Like, because the contact we talked about, if he could hit 250, 240, and hit, give us 25 or 30 home runs a year, we, we feel like that was a pretty good trade-off um, preferably over the 30 mark and he's he's well on pace um, with the 127 wrc plus i am pleased with his performance thus far and hopefully um, he continues to produce at this rate and can give us that 30 home runs or more um, and keep that on base percentage between 350 and 400 and just when we thought things were turning around, our star pitcher, Brent Hedrick, strained his oblique and will be out for five weeks. Very unfortunate. Um, we are thankful that it is only five weeks. But he, again, is dominating. 
He has a 2.54 ERA in nine starts with a 2-1 and one record. Um, absolutely having the best year of his career. Um, a 246 BABIP against him. So definitely a pitcher that we were enjoying having in our rotation. And unfortunately, we will have to put him on the IL for about a month and then... Um, Find a replacement for him. More than likely will be Johan Aviedo that rolls into that position. And the move that we made to fill the position for our Brent Hedrick, we did put Aviedo in the starting rotation. We are going to bring up AJ Blabo. You guys might be familiar with him. He's been on the team the last two seasons. Didn't do well at all last year at all in the starting rotation. In 2027, he pitched well. Um, we're going to put him in the bullpen for now in middle relief and long relief and see if he can provide some meaningful innings for us. And we have made it to June 1st, and our rookie sensation, Mason Davis, has just run just one Rookie of the Month. So an awesome month for him. We will check in and see what it is he did this month. He hit 324, 34 hits, 8 home runs, and 22 RBIs. He's now hitting 275 on the season with 14 home runs and 32 RBIs on June 1st. Has also scored 31 runs. Still striking out a little bit um, more than we like, um, but at the same time, we, we kind of expected that. 11 walks, um, a WRC plus of 123 and a 2.2 war. His fielding is also excellent. Uh, he now has a 6.5 zone rating in center field and a 1.096 efficiency. So definitely got to be in the mix for rookie of the year. Um, loving the start to his career, that is for sure. We also got a PM, uh, a message from Greg Ricks, who is currently a setup guy for us. He wants to be a starter, um, and that's unfortunate because we really like him where he's at. He has a 1.71 ERA in 21 innings in our setup role, so we really like him in that role. Not that I wouldn't like him in the starting role, but man, that's tough to tough to potentially change and put him there. Um, we do have Isaiah Campbell, who has a 2.02 ERA with more innings pitched. Um, and Blabo with a 1.42 ERA, so we could make some moves around. And I do have a couple starting pitchers. Um, most notably, um, one that is concerning me is Chase Hampton. Um Wants to be a starter, but is not doing well. By far the worst starter on our staff at 6.44 ERA in 11 starts. And I don't know how long I should let this play out. So I will get back to you on that. Um, but overall, we are at June 1st. And we are 25 and 30, so we're, we're keeping it respectable. Definitely a, an upgrade from last year. Um, looking at our team um, statistics, so we are one game above Pythagorean expectations. They have us at 24 and 31. Um, we are 10 and 13 at home and 15 and 17 on the road. So pretty even there. Um, not doing so hot in extra inning games, two and five. One run games, eight and 10. Um, 8 and 11 versus lefties and 17 and 19 versus righties. Um, May was by far our best month at 16 and 12. So we started off the season at 9 and 18. And our second month of the season was a above 500 se um, 
above 500 a month at 16 and 12. So definitely moving in the right direction. As far as our league statistics and where we rank, um, hits is definitely up from last year. We're sitting in ninth. Um, we're sitting in fourth in strikeouts, first in stolen bases. So that's definitely up. And our base running is definitely a lot better uh, than last year. That was a negative. It's at a 1.1 now, which is eighth in the AL. So those are improvements. Um, I would think our home runs would be better, and it is. I'm pretty sure it was dead last last year, but we are tied for 12th. So definitely some improvements on the offensive side. Still would like more, but we have made tremendous strides on the pitching side and most notably in our starting rotation. Um, our overall staff ERA is ninth in the, e in the AL. Our starter... ERA is second in the AL at 3.90. Uh, bullpen, as bad as some of them are, is still 11th. Um, I don't think we have one category where we are last, and that is in walks. So I think we definitely we should turn that around. Um, but much improved for our pitching staff. So we are moving in the right direction on that for sure. Checking in on anyone that we see having a solid season. Um, one that is struggling, struggling is Lawrence Butler, hitting 193, three home runs and 15 RBIs. He did miss an entire month, so he's still coming back. Um, that average is climbing a bit. Um, as you can see, it has gone up over the past few games, so hopefully he is moving in the right direction. Uh, Drew Gilbert struggling a little bit, hitting 246, 247, five home runs and 26 RBIs, just an 81 WC, WRC plus. So we expect that to potentially tick up a little bit, hopefully. Um, Ezekiel Duran is filling in nicely for us. Um, a 111 WRC plus, hitting 280 with four home runs and 13 RBIs. Um, definitely doing a great job for us. Um, fielding isn't the greatest, but we do have him at second base where his zone rating is a zero and his efficiency is a 1.016. So not bad. That is where we put him at for the majority of his position time. Um, Xavier Edwards having a, a good season for us, 273, 327. Um, nothing crazy, but definitely a solid leadoff guy getting on base for us and not striking out much. Um, of course, we talked about Mason. Um, Junior Moreno is struggling a little bit here lately, 224 now. His OBP is still almost 350. And his WRC plus is a 112, and it's mainly because he's walking, and uh, he does have 11 home runs. So hanging in there. Hopefully he can get that back up to like 250-ish, and uh, a little bit more pop. Blaze Jordan, solid start to the season: 263, seven home runs, 25 RBIs with a 100 WRC plus. Um, only one we didn't talk about, what well, we didn't talk about too, Nico Horner, 256, four home runs, 17 RBIs, only 18 strikeouts, and um, not a great year, but a 85 WRC plus, and he is playing shortstop for us, where unfortunately it's not pretty. Um, a negative zone rating. Um, second base is definitely his better position, but we need him at short right now because of our injuries, and it is hurting us. As you can see, uh, Bodine only hitting 200 with a 43 WRC+. Plus. That is not ideal. Let's see what Silas is doing even worse. So catching is not good for us right now. Potentially something we could move on or make some moves on. Michael Arroyo, with 32 at bats, um, has been, or excuse me, with 
45 at bats has been rather impressive. 311 um, with a home run and six RBIs. So he's doing his job as a backup for sure. And last but not least, Brandon Marsh doing what we expect. Solid defense and a average bat hitting 250 with three home runs and 16 RBIs in 101 at bats pitching um, we'll look at the starting pitching chris montgomery a 372 era with a 103 fit minus and a 117 era plus is four and four on the year with the for us our young pitching sensation jose cornell has a 285 era only two and two on the season um, in 10 starts, but an 86 FIP minus and a 1.2 war with a 153 ERA plus. Griffin Canning also pitching well, 353 ERA, um, 81 FIP minus and a 123 ERA plus. Johan Aviedo, Aviedo is pitching better um, for us. It's getting better. Still not where I would like it to be, but his ERA has consistently gone down each time he has pitched. So that is a positive. Hopefully he can get that back down into the fours where he has kind of lived throughout his career. Um, and that we will definitely take that. Um, but right now it is not where he wants it to be. And the one that we've talked about moving is Chase Hampton. Um... 644 ERA and 11 starts, so definitely the worst. Um, has a negative war. Um, we might let him pitch through June and then decide at that point what we need to do because we are still in contention here at 25 and 30. So we are one or two moves away from potentially contending for a wild card spot. Um, but we shall see. That is kind of our midseason or early season review of how we're doing. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and see how June goes. And checking in on the prospects, I uh, was going through and seeing um, how they were performing and I noticed something that is quite upsetting and I'm gonna have to go through and move some players around. Um, I don't know how it happened, but the low A ball team and the double A team somehow this year got excluded from the schedule. So I don't know what happened, um, but basically they're not playing a game this year and it's quite upsetting. I did have a few guys at those places um, so I'm going to have to shift them around um, I have already moved a couple I'll have to move Ethan Wheeler uh, just so that they can get playing time if you will um, I'll just promote Ethan Wheeler um, Where was he? Why is he in the... Sorry, guys. I'm just flustered here. It does kind of aggravate me. I don't know what happened, honestly. But we will work around it. We will work around it. All right. He is at high A ball now. Um where I thought he was, but I guess. Um, and then I will have to move him to probably triple A. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go through and assign any other interesting prospects to teams that are gonna play this year. Um, I did check on the rookie ball team. They are going to play the DSL rookie. They are in the schedule, so we're good there. I guess this is just something that I'm going to have to check every year. Um, been doing this since 2024 now, and 
Um, the eight ball team was one of the first teams we created. So um, something funky happened. And I will just have to double check the schedules every year before we get started. But other than that, um, I was going to promote some players and things like that. But there's just just nowhere to put them um, because they just so happen to be promoted to the next level. And those were the levels that were missing. And that's how I found out um, that these teams weren't playing. And I should have just looked right here and it would have told me. But... Just didn't think about it. So you live and you learn. I'm going to move some players around so that they can get some playing time, at least the ones that are interesting prospects. And um, we will move on and, and learn from it. But other than that, uh, it's a good place to end the episode in June, June 1st at 25 and 30. Still very much in the mix here. Only four games out of a wild card spot. Um, 10 games back in the division so that's not ideal but definitely in the mix for a wild card spot hopefully we can maintain this momentum and maintain um, the play that we played in may and have another above 500 month in june and um, in the next episode we will see who makes the all-star team And we will get to the first year player draft where um, I believe we are going to be, yep, number one overall. Um, So we will get to the draft and see who is available and who we like and um, ultimately draft the next class for the Mobile Bay Bears. But... Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Um, apologize for the mess up here um, in the minor league system. I don't know what happened. I honestly don't. That's a, that's a first. Um, but we will move on from it. We will make it right next year, and uh, we will get our prospects to a minor league team that is playing a schedule. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a good one.